What's the crack, lads? Welcome back. Happy Monday. Hope you guys had a great weekend. We are back with our Napoli pack opening. Let's get straight into it. We've got three very, ex well, exciting enough highlight players here. Uh, Kavrashkilia, Oshiman, and Anguisa. So there are really, they are really three good players. I think even if you've got a very good squad, I still think these guys are worth it. Um, and we're going to get into why in a second. There is also a hidden gem in this in this pack, um, which I think, you know, a lot of people are going to sleep on, but I definitely think you shouldn't. So we'll give you a bit of an insight into that. Um, and yeah, we will go from there. So we are going to start with two or three of the players that we're not really going to focus on too much. We're just going to glance over. Um, so we are going to start, obviously, with Merritt. Merritt is a keeper that, you know, he's just your standard keeper, lads. Defensive keeper, um, low punt. He's got a wavering form. He's on C rating, not bad. Now, his stats do go up to... Um, this is, this is kind of how we've trained him. So 85, 81, 83, 90 reflexes and 86 reach. Not bad. He's tall enough as well. He's a defensive goalkeeper. He's got low punt. He's got penalty saver. He's got unwavering form. Um, doesn't take that much training to get him up. I genuinely think, you know, if you are playing the game or if you started playing the game, I would definitely recommend a top goalkeeper, like one of the top, top guys that is like 94, 95 overall. If you do have to spend a lot of money to, or a lot of GP to get him, I do definitely think the standard goalkeepers are still better. If you're just trying to, tr you know, try out merit or try to train a different keeper, then he is, you know, he's worth a punt as well. We've also got Kim here as well. Um, don't need to spend too much time on Kim, lads. He does have blocker and interception. He does have weighted pass and man marking. He's got some nice player skills. I do also like the fact that you can kind of train him up very differently depending on how you want to train him because he has got a lot of progression points. Um or sorry, he has got a lot of baseline good stats, such as speed and acceleration, that you don't need to train too much. But if you are looking for a def defensive monster, that's all you're going to get with him. You're not going to get that defensive awareness over 90. But you're not going to get all defensive stats over 90, no matter what you do. If you just pump up everything here, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get 15, so you're still going to have 89 defensive awareness. It's not a deal breaker, but I genuinely think that if you train him up a little bit more um, kind of like all-rounder, I do think that you can get a very, very good player. If you want to have a player here uh, that's going to be more of an all-rounder with the speed and the tackling and the aggression without having those really overpowered defensive stats, right? So next up, we have got um, De Lorenzo. He's another player that even though he's got a form, this guy's a bit of a hidden gem as well. He's not the hidden gem of this video, but he is kind of somebody that we've covered before in a lot of detail um, where it was basically, you know, it depends how you train him. This guy is a very, very stereotypical kind of guy that you can train multiple ways. And what I like about him most of all is with 26 levels to go, we've got 50 progression points. He's got a very good baseline uh, stats and player skills. And I always look for, you know, options when I'm using my full backs, right? If I'm looking for a right back or a left back, I want to have the option to either choose to be defensive left back or right back. Or I want to be like, you know, somebody that's, well, I want him to either be defensive or I want him to be able to be offensive, right? And the way that you balance that is you basically, if you want him to be a defensive, you have higher defensive awareness and defensive stats. If you want him to be better attacking, you go with the offensive awareness route with the ball control and all that and the acceleration, right? So for this, we've gone for an offensive build here, but his defensive stats are still higher than his offensive awareness. So that's something that you need to look at. Obviously, you can take this down and pump one more in there. He's going to be perfectly balanced, but I do think that the best version of this guy is actually kind of like a more average um, defensive guy, right? So you just take down this a little bit, we take down this a little bit, we take away the pass in a little bit, and then we pump up the rest into defense. You're going to have a very solid right back. I do think there are better right backs than him there, um, but he's on A form and he's got on wavering form as well. So uh, I do think that he is worth a punt if you do get him. But yeah, I mean, look, he is a bit of a beast. I know he is a bit of a beast. I know a lot of people rave about him, but stats wise, you know, don't tell the full story with this guy. So don't be afraid to play him because he does hold his own against the top class wingers. Now, moving on to kind of the exciting players of this, we have Lozano, right? Now, Lozano is another player that I really, really like in this game and the way that they've him, you know, trained up and built and whatever. Um, I definitely think that he is just kind of your stereotypical winger, 25 levels to go. Very good player. The Mexican uh, is a very good player. And obviously, when you get a winger like this, 
because he does have a lot of nice player skills, we don't need to focus too much on his shooting stats, right? So if he had a lot of passing stats, I wouldn't be upgrading the passing at all if that was the way it was. If he's a lot of defensive stats, you can kind of hold back on the defensive stats if you have a CMF or whatever. But this guy, I'm just going to train him up, man. Dribbling dexterity and lower body. Very easy to train him up. I think that's the best version of him. You do have a couple of the player skills there that are going to be... Um, you know, first time shot, long range, dipping shots, all that. So you don't need to really worry too much about his shooting. If you can finish with him, great. But that's not going to be his main role in this squad. I do think that right midfielders and left midfielders are still better at the moment um, than wingers. But obviously, there's an exception, which we'll see with Cavaradona later. Um, but I do like this guy, man. And I do like the fact that he's got some very interesting player skills. Obviously, the form lets him down a, a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's just your kind of stereotypical winger, um, and there are a lot of good wingers in the game, but yeah, if you do pack him, he's not the worst there. So now this is kind of where we get excited, right? Because there is two really good players and Guisa and Labotka. Labotka, lads, I think genuinely is a proper, proper hidden gem, right? And I'm going to get to it now in just a second, right? So the biggest thing about this card, in my opinion, is he is an orchestrator, right? Similar to Kimmich from Bayern Munich, who's one of the best players in the game. This guy looks to be an absolute monster, right? Right. Look, I'm I'm just getting I'm just getting carried away, right? But look at this guy's stats, man. Double touch, cut behind, scotch, and soul control for dribbling skills. He's also got one touch pass, true pass, and way to pass, and low lofted pass. Low lofted stun and passes are super overpowered at the moment. Way to pass is also overpowered. And true passing is completely broken. So that doesn't really make a difference. You are going to have to just manually um, do a lot of the true passes and accept that they are kind of broken and they do it, you go straight into the defender's legs and stuff like that. It's just the way the game plays at the moment. But look at his stats, man, from a core like perspective here, right? 80 ball control, 81 low pass, 80 balance. And then his defensive and speed stats are all in the 70s, which is insane, right? Now, I usually don't recommend a, an orchestrator DMF you know, I'd always play Kimmich CMF and, you know, Makalele or Declan Rice or somebody that's either a box box or an anchorman, right? But for this guy, I do genuinely think he could be an excellent alternative to Kimmich. And he could even surpass Kimmich in how he's able to use the ball as well, right? So when we look at his stats here, this is one version of him that we've trained up that's an attacking based DMF and orchestrator. So he's still going to sit back defensively. You're going to have 81 tackling, 82 aggression. 6 into defending, but we've 11 into lower body, 10 into dribbling, 9 into passing. We're going to have 90 ball control, 90 low pass, and 90 stamina. That's going to be an all-round orchestrator, similar to Kimmich, in that he's a bit of an engine man, bit of a box-to-box, -box, has, has natural defensive stats, has natural player skills that are going to be for dribbling and passing. And he's also got really small, like low uh, player center of gravity. So his balance and stuff is going to be really good. Um, just from the way that the game is played at the moment, you know, those smaller base players have excellent balance when they're on the ball, such as Pedri, such as Xavi, such as Iniesta, such as any of those guys, such as this guy. So this is an attacking base version of him. But I think where he really excels, right, is if you actually pump him up um, defensive, right? So we're going to take a couple here. This is his defensive build here. We're going to keep that fairly high. We're also going to keep the acceleration at 80. We're going to remove this just a fraction. We still want him to be a bit of an engine man, but we are going to remove it just a fraction, and we're going to pump this up into defense. So we're going to have an orchestrator DMF here that is going to be an absolute beast, right? Now, there's two ways that we can do it. Obviously, the first one is to max out his defending with 13 each, and then obviously that's going to bring him up to that level, right? So we're going to have 88 low, low pass, we're going to have 88 ball control, we're going to have 80 speed and acceleration and 87 stamina, but then look at the defense stats, right? Now, the why I say this guy is going to be overpowered is if you play this guy as a central midfielder, right? And you played a uh, box to box behind him, you can completely dominate midfield because of these player stats, right? You've got excellent defensive stats, but you've also got excellent attack stats with the speed, the balance, the stamina, and the acceleration. So very interesting player. I definitely think he's the hidden gem of the pack. You can train him up multiple different ways. Even if you take back a couple of defensive stats there, you know, you can, you know, get the passing back up to 90. You can also get the dribbling nearly up to 90 as well. If you take one or two there, you know, 90 dribbling, 90 ball control, uh, or 90 low pass, 80 speed like there's so many ways to train him but i do think that defensively i think that's the way to go with him is to have him naturally defensive and then have the player skills and the attack stats to boost that up so moving on we also have anguisa before we get to the two main boys 
Anguisa is a CMF. I mean, if you pair him with Labotka, this guy is a destroyer, right? So if you're getting a box-to-box -box or a destroyer, excellent player skills as usual with this card. One of the hidden gems of the whole game, really. Unwavering form, B rating. He's got double touch for a CMF destroyer. That's insane. He's also got one touch pass, track back and interception. I think him and Labotka are two insane players in this pack. I know that Ashi and um, Cavaradonna will get all the plaudits, but... Genuinely, I think you've got, you know, four chances of getting a beastly player here when you include these two guys. And look at the stats again, man. You've got multiple ways of training him up, which we'll show you in a second. But unwavering form. Look at the player skills, man. One touch pass, double touch, as I said, weighted pass. But then he's also got interception and sliding, sliding tackle. So very, very overpowered. He goes to 91 overall with this uh, training guide here. This is more of a defensive one. We're obviously going to focus on defending quite a lot. If you want to make him more of an all-rounder, um, you can train him up slightly different. But again, man, look at the stats here that you're going to be getting for a destroyer center midfielder. 83 speed, 86 stamina, 80 acceleration, and then you've also got 90 aggression, 85 tackling, 82 awareness, and 87 engagement. And then the ball control, dribbling, and tight possession. The only thing letting you down is passing. It's not in the 80s which you can very easily remedy if you want to by just taking down this to 80. That's probably what I would do. Now, the stamina is a bit of a concern at that. I still think you need 85 stamina, but you could do that and bring up the low pass to 80 as well. So there's multiple ways of training him. There's a lot of different ways and things that you can do with him. I think he's a beast. I think him and Labotka are definitely up there with um, the best players that they have released for their position, for their actual training points, and for the way that you can train them. I think that, you know, you could definitely do a lot worse than the two of those. Now, moving on to the main attraction, lads, we do have Cavaradonna and Ashi, right? I'm going to focus on Ashi first because I do think that this Ashi card is kind of an interesting one compared to the Showtime that they released, right? So firstly, if you have missed my Showtime review of Ashi, I've gone, gone into a lot of detail with him, right? But the thing I would say about Ashi here is that his stats are slightly different and they do differ. This is a different card, I would say, um, than I was expecting them to release for the stats that he has here. And why I say this is if this Ashi here, if you look at him, right, in a vacuum, this Club Selection Napoli pack, when we just quick compare him you will see, with the Showtime, you will see that the big difference between these cards, right, they both are starting at level 84, okay? But this card has only got 21 levels, whereas the Showtime has got 29 levels, right? But the Showtime card has actually got way worse type possession, and it's also got worse stats in pretty much everything because obviously um, you've got, you know, what, five more levels, eight more levels to go. But the thing that I like about this card is that you can train him a lot more kind of uh, streamlined, right? So while this Showtime card does struggle a little bit with the offensive awareness, the acceleration, the balance, and all that sort of stuff, you can get this card kind of, it does streamline how you're going to train up Ashi here because you don't need to worry about the, uh, the dribbling as much, right? Because with this card, which you minus four, you need to put 10 into dribbling really, or eight or nine into dribbling with this Showtime card, um, realistically to get that tight possession up to 75. Whereas with this one, I mean, you can have the, the 75 with just four dribbling points there, and you'll have a very similar Showtime dribbling um, version of the card. And then you can pump in, you know, if you wanted to go 90 and 90, if you wanted to go 90, 90, 90. Obviously, the big difference between these cards is the shooting, right? So you're not going to get the shooting anywhere near the Showtime one, because obviously you can get the Showtime one up to pretty much like, you know, 90. Um, this one is going to kind of max out, I would say, even if you take down the dexterity, you don't want that speed as high, um, and you don't want the lower body speed that high, um, you could leave that at that, you're still only going to get the shooting to about 88, you know what I mean, even if you max out kind of pretty much everything, um, with finishing, you are going to be kind of struggling with the rest of the card in terms of the offensive awareness and the acceleration, and look, if you can't, lads, genuinely, I think if you're good enough at the game, um, you should be able to finish with like 87 uh, finishing or around that. Like that is genuinely where I would say the sweet spot is 86, 87. Um, so that's something to think about. But yeah, he is a very decent card. You know what you're getting with him. You're getting one of the best strikers in the game. He's just a different type of striker. He's not going to be running gun like Mbappe, as I've always mentioned before. Um, so we will switch over here and show you. So basically that is kind of how we would train him up there. Um, if it's going to be something that we look at going forward as a player to lead the line i do think he is very decent but i just think the showtime card when we hover over there um is just going to be slightly better with the finishing and stuff like that so 
yeah, look, obviously the Showtime is going to be the monster version of him. Um, but I do think that he still more than holds his own uh, against the Showtime card there. 89 speed, 88 acceleration, 87 and 87 for the finishing and the offensive awareness. If you want to train him up slightly differently, you could have 85 with the finishing. And then you could obviously boost up the dexterity if you wanted to do that. 90 and 89 for the offensive awareness and 90 for the acceleration with 72 balance. Balance is the big key for these players. So... Yeah, that's it, lads. We have Kavrashkelia as well. So this guy is a bit of a monster as well. I've been very impressed with him. You've got multiple ways of training him up. Now, obviously, the question will be, does he stack up against the mid-season MVP? And I actually reckon that this guy is better, um, the one that they've released today. So that is going to be interesting to see if um, he is going to be the guy that you that you kind of want to get. I do like this mid-season one. Like, I, I've trained him up. I think he's an absolute monster. The mid-season one, you know, 90 ball control, 90 dribbling, 90 acceleration. But this guy's got 91 ball control, 92 dribbling, and 90 acceleration. Obviously, the big differences between these cards is the mid-season one has no um, shooting. And he's obviously got a little bit less stamina or a little bit more stamina. But this guy has got better speed, better stamina, and a bit more finishing. So you do kind of have to pick your poison. I do think that this is one of the best versions that they have released. He goes to 95 overall, and that is the best version that they have released of him. So this is the guy to get if you are looking to get him. I think he's an absolute monster. You've seen my review on Kvarat Skilia. You know what he's all about. And you know that he is going to be one of the best wingers in the game. 91, 92, and 90 for the three main stats that you need. And then also on top of that as well, you do have that offensive awareness and balance and stamina that are going to be extremely high. So that is it for me, lads. It's been a slightly longer video than I expected, but this is a very interesting pack, a very good pack. Let me know if you're going to spin or skip, and I will talk to you in a bit. Peace.